lost on that. When you see Group A, it's a disgrace that these guys are all yeah. together. Really it's a shame that two of these are going to especially Holland and Germany, you know, two of the top three favourites. Mm. So mm. Uh, for Portugal, gee, it's tough. But then the Portuguese say when they're in a tough group is usually when they'll f find their way out of it. Uh, that in fact they play stronger against the good teams than the weaker ones where they tend to uh, sort of feel as though uh, you know the, the three points is a divine right but in terms of sheer quality well they're unbelievable side really Nani and Ronaldo you imagine them going on the counter attack now in this tournament mm. when there's going to be quite a lot of that I feel my real uh, interest will be in the first games in this group how do they all approach it you know do they go and say if we win the three points given the strength of everyone you're well on your way to actually mm. getting out mm. as second mm. spot or do you, does everyone just say we, we, we don't want to be beaten? Because if you lose your first game, you're in really a world of hurt. So uh, defensively is, is not bad. Bruno Alves and Pepe sitting in there. He liked to play Pepe in the centre of midfield, but with Carvalho out when he, yeah. when he had an argument with him. He has to play him back there now. But Morelis, really good quality. Uh, I'd love to see them go well. OK, what about the Dutch? We know their pedigree from the World Cup and Van Mavik's uh, uh, style that was criticised, but mm. it seems to have been a more attacking posture in qualifying and, and indeed in some of the friendlies leading up to Euro. Well, I hope he plays a more attacking style because that's what we're accustomed to watching uh, uh, Holland. It was very surprising what we saw in, in the World Cup, but uh, what happened? They made the World Cup final and uh, if a, a couple of things that had gone their way, they mm. possibly would have went further. But for them, uh, you know, two of the, two of the best strikers in the, in the world at the moment, uh, Van Persie, who's uh, leading goal scorer in the EPL la last season, and um, Klaus-Jan Huntela, who took it out in, in Germany. And just, just uh, you know, you can't... Can he, can he play both of them in this side? That's, that's that, the question that, I was That, that is ask. the question. That's yeah. always tough because they both play... If you're playing in a 4-2-3-1, uh, uh, that one up front, you can't, you, see, you know, Van Persie, if you put him back as a number 10 or put him out wide somewhere, you may be you're going to lose something from his attacking qualities. But they've got abundance of talent. Um, they've got Dirk Cowden, Wesley Snyder, who's got a bit of lack, lack of um, match practice. But I just think this is an exciting game, exciting group. Uh, Robin, he's mm. he's been they really, really quality, eh? he's yeah, but uh, you know how do, how does the the and events Affale, of what's happening with him also affect in him? Now. Came mm. back from his bad knee injury, but they've always had so much quality in their in their squads. But it's yeah, it's, have, it's then yeah. producing a, Hart, Gee, you know every every shot you have, you know there's an absolute top class player. Mm. Uh, going back to the last tournament, they went really well mm. uh, with Van Basten, but uh, but went out. Of course, uh, it was against Russia. It was against Hus, right? Mm. Uh, so now it's this is a big. Uh, um, almost how long's he been there now, uh, Van Marwijk? He's been there quite a good few years now, so he's really built up a lot of stability with the mm. group. Uh, they're seen as being far less argumentative than many of the groups, if, if probably than any, uh, which is going to work in their favour. This could well be their tournament. Mm. A quality at the top of the Dutch squad is really, but is there a, an issue with potential depth if they get a few injuries in the group stage? Um, what, in attack? Well, well no, geez. no, just <laughs> well, overall. Just put more, just, just put more <laughs> no, attackers defense. on. There is in issues defense. in defence. They're not the only one. German, <laughs> Germany have the same issue. Actually, quite a few of the squads have issues in defence and they've got an abundance of attacking talent. So, for Holland, um, their depth is in attack, yeah, so maybe defensively that's, that, that could be the case. OK, Germany, we know uh, they are many people's favourites for this tournament, although not betting favourites. Spain are certainly the favourites in that respect. But yeah. uh, Jogi Lewis had eight years with them. Eight um, years. Fantastic grounding with a, a young team that really came of age at the last World Cup. Uh, yeah. Do you see them as the logical favourites to get out of this group and for the tournament overall? Well, it's a, it is, like we've been saying, it's a very difficult group, but Germany, uh, for me, are one of the favourites, or well, they're the favourite to take it out. I mean, a lot of people tipping Spain and Germany. I think Germany are in fantastic form. Um, you know, they had a hiccup against uh, Switzerland, losing 5-3, yep. but they were without any of the Bayern players who are just finishing up after the... Uh, UCL defeat, but um, here you've got Gomez. Gomez uh, just doesn't get a run uh, that often in the national team. Close their plays up front. He is settled on the, on his main players, very similar to the squad that did so well in the 2010 World Cup. Um, but there are now a lot of young players coming through. Marco Royce has had uh, he's had a fantastic year with München Gladbach. Uh, Mario Götze who's had a great year with uh, Dortmund. Uh, Schürrle, who scores a, a fantastic goal in this game as well. Muller, Muller's been a, a funny one. You know, he's missed a lot of chances like this, uh, not only for the national team but for for Bayern as well. And uh, the first year coming out of the World Cup, he was just scoring for fun. And uh, this is a great goal from Schürrle. He's scored a couple. So there's a lot of talent coming through. So for me, the key is 
Um, they've got a, a good base. They've got the players that have done it. They've evolved, mm. but they've also got a lot of young players coming through and a lot of exciting young players. Youngest German side since 1934. Mm. Uh, Do they have uh, yeah. potential cracks at uh, in at the back in defence that could hurt them? Well, it's a good question because well, as much as we talk about all the attacking weaponry of some of these teams and so on, the, the, the teams that go on and win are usually mm. the ones who have the least weaknesses because they've all got quality teams. Everyone knows that the Euro, I mean, certainly once they get out of the group stage, they, these are you know many of the finest national teams in the world. So uh, it's more a question, I think, for, for Germany is mm. the goal taking. I mean, uh, you know, he's closer... Can closer have another wonderful tournament as he's had so many times? Does it in the every past. time? It's of amazing. His time for Lazio says that he can. Does it all the um, time? They can be a little bit uh, with Murdersacker and these guys. They can be. He hasn't been in great form. But then when they usually come to tournaments, you don't see a lot of defensive frailty yeah. from no. them. A brief one on Denmark, and we covered them uh, against the Socceroos a little bit earlier in the show. But yeah. uh, um, obviously the outsiders to go through, but. You know, it's not an impossible task for them. No, it's not. But you speak about defensively and just, just going on the uh, Aussie game alone. Um, you know, we, we carved out some beautiful openings true, there. And defensively, true. they... Straight down. They, you know, straight middle. down. Exactly. The, the, the two Bross chances, uh, the one that he missed one-on-one -on -one and then straight after it, were, were yeah, it was right down the middle of the park. And very easy chances. And if you're, you're going to give those in, the, in a Euro situation, it's not going to... Um, you know, you're going to get punished. So for, for that reason, Germany's I think it's going to find... Or, yeah, or they're going to find it very difficult. The Dutch with the speed they have going mm. forward. Mm. Absolutely. Well, it should be a, a fantastic tournament, guys. So thanks for your time and thanks See for looking guys. at all the groups. Thanks, mate. OK, that's about it for the World Game. This week, of course, this coming weekend marks the beginning of our coverage of Euro 2012. Join us from 5.30 this Saturday on SBS2 for the highlights of day one. Every goal, the best action and reaction from the tournament's first two matches. And if you're not able to catch the show on TV, it'll be up on the website from 6.30pm every night. And we'll have a comprehensive review of the opening games next week on the World Game. Plus, we'll analyse the Socceroos World Cup qualifier against Oman. And on the cycling tour, the Criterium du Dauphiné continues tonight following last night's prologue. Live coverage of Stage 1 can be seen from 11. All the stars are there, including, of course, Cadell Evans. It's well worth a look as the riders gear up for the Tour de France, which starts in less than four weeks and is also live here on SBS. Thanks for your company this evening. Have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.